the Rainbow Theater presents The Karate Kid 2, Okinawa. You can read along with me in your book. You'll know it's time to turn the page when you hear this. Let's begin now. It was six months after Daniel LaRusso won the karate tournament that Mr. Miyagi received a letter telling him that his father was very sick. He would have to go to Okinawa. Daniel had his mother's permission to go with him and wondered why Mr. Miyagi had left Okinawa in the first place. Mr. Miyagi smiled. fall in love with girl. So why'd you leave? Was arranged by her parents. She married someone else. Did you ever meet the guy? Hi. Well, what was he like? Was Miyagi's best friend named Sato. Girlfriend named Yukie. She sent me letter to say father sick. You think your friend Sato's still alive? We were same age. What did he do when he found out about you two? Challenged Miyagi to fight. Must have been some girl. Ah, how I remember. I make big speech in front of whole village. Miyagi break with tradition. Go against parents' arrangement. Won't marry Yukie anyway. Miyagi paused and slowly shook his head. Of course. Sato feel disgraced. So challenge Miyagi to fight to save his honor. And you lost? No. Never fight. Next day, leave Okinawa forever. Well, what about her? Didn't you love her? Very much. Did she love you? I. Well, so how could you leave? Miyagi, no belief in fighting. I know that, but you guys are in love. Come on. Daniel-san, never put passion before principle. Even if win, you lose. Do you think they got married? Sato. His family was richest in village. Yukie's was poorest. Was good arrangement. Yeah, well, it was 45 years ago. He shouldn't be angry about his honor anymore. Daniel-san, in Okinawa, honor have no time limit. You serious? In Okinawa, honor very serious. On the plane to Okinawa, Daniel wanted to know more about Sato. Miss Miyagi, was Sato as good as you at karate? Of same teacher. Your father taught both of you? Hi. If you'd fought Sato, do you think your father would have been referee? No, there would have been no referee. How would you know who wins? The one who dead doesn't. When they arrived in Okinawa, they saw from a poster that Sato had kept up his karate and was now a famous teacher. To Miyagi's surprise, there was a car to meet them, but instead of taking them to his father's village, it took them to Sato, who greeted them angrily. So, coward, you return! To settle affairs with father. And with me. Sato, I no fight you. Then you die as you have lived, a coward. You see your father, then you see me. Miyagi and Daniel were left to find their own way to the village. 
Eventually they reached it and went to the house of Miyagi's father. He was being tended by Yukiya. Your father sleeping, Miyagi. Yukiya, how you know where to send letter? Have not many years. Why you never write sooner? Out of respect. For husband? No, for your silence. I never married. Miyagi's father woke and saw his son with great joy. He spoke weakly in his own language, which Yukiya's niece translated for Daniel. Miyagi's father say, if I am dreaming, let me never awake. If I'm awake, let me never sleep. The next day, Miyagi showed Daniel his father's dojo and the secret of the Miyagi family karate. A toy drum on a stick with two small beaters attached by strings. When the stick was twisted, the beaters struck the drum. This is the secret of your family's karate? I don't get it. Practice, Danielson. You will. What do these posters on the wall say? Ah. These rules to karate. Rule number one. Karate for defense only. Rule number two. First learn rule number one. Miyagi took Daniel on a conducted tour through the village. Don't see many people fishing, Miss Miyagi. Yukiya tell me that after war, Sato's father bought big modern boat and overfish. Now all the fish gone. My father helped village survive by organizing growing of vegetables. All land owned by Sato, who rents it to villagers. At that moment, Sato drove up and confronted Miyagi. You have seen father? Hi. Then we fight tonight. I bring a nephew for witness. Then, you and nephew both lose sleep tonight. I not be there. You leave me no choice. Sato drew back his hand and prepared to attack. Miyagi looked at him calmly. As Sato was about to release a punch, Yukiya ran up and separated them. Miyagi, your father, he wants you, and you too, Sato. At his father's house, Miyagi and Sato knelt on either side of the old man's bed. He opened his eyes for a moment, took their hands and put them together then smiled and quietly died. Sato pulled his hand away and stood up. Out of respect for my teacher, I give you three days to mourn. When finish, I come back. You prepare to join your father. Miyagi had no intention of fighting Sato and spent the next three days renewing his friendship with Yukiya. Daniel, for his part, became very friendly with Yukiya's niece, and she showed him the sights. One day they went into town, and Daniel saw Sato at work with his students. He was very impressed. Then they looked in at a bar where bets were being wagered on who could break the most sheets of ice with a single blow. Sato's nephew was there and forced Daniel into taking part. Either you break ice or I break your neck. All three sheets? No, not just three, six. Daniel was saved by the arrival of Miyagi. Don't worry, I fix. Thank you, Miss Miyagi. I bet $600 Daniel-san 
Break all six sheets of ice. Daniel was horrified and whispered frantically to Miyagi. What? I can't break six. I don't know if I can break one. Sato's nephew was equally taken aback. He could not afford to bet six hundred dollars. However, Sato himself arrived and guaranteed the money. Daniel had to go ahead. Mr. Miyagi made him do his breathing exercise, and then, to everyone's surprise, Daniel's included, he smashed all six sheets of ice with ease. That night, Daniel was alone at Miyagi's house when he heard Sato calling. Miyagi! Come out! We fight now! Daniel went outside. He saw Sato and his nephew and two other boys who grabbed hold of him. Ah! What are you guys doing here? Take your hands off me! Where, Miyagi? I, I don't know. Sato turned to his nephew. Leave message for me. With pleasure, uncle. Sato left, and the others proceeded to smash up the house and the garden. His nephew forced Daniel to fight with a spear, but Miyagi arrived back in time to save him. Enough! Uncle have problem with Miyagi, not with boy. He took on all three at karate and soon had them running. You're right, Don Harrison. I, I thought he was going to kill me. Miyagi, make tea. Make you feel better. Tomorrow, we go home. The next day, Miyagi said goodbye to Yukiya. Yukiya, I did not want for us to end this way again. I would stay if I could. I know. Yukiya, what can I do to ease your pain? Take me with you. They were disturbed by the noise of a bulldozer tearing up the village vegetable plots. Sado was there, watching, and Miyagi faced him angrily. What are you doing? I sell them. Why? Why you think? You will destroy village. No, you will. The two men stared at each other. Then Miyagi shook his head. You win. I fight you. On one condition. No matter who win. Title to land, pass to village forever. Ha <laughs> ha! You ask for too much. Small price to pay for your honor. You are right. Small price. I see you here at midnight. Miyagi, I wait a long time for this. If you not fight me tonight, everything go. Whole village. The homes, the church, everything gone. Later that evening, Miyagi handed Daniel a scroll of paper. Here, take this. What is it? Last will and testament. You Yukiya get house here. You get house and pick up back home. I don't want the house and pick up back home. I want you. Can we call this off? Why don't we just leave? Impossible, Daniel-san. Just forget about the honor garbage. Have nothing to do with honor garbage. This have to do with village survival. This isn't three points and you're out. If you lose, I know what happens. You're dead. Miyagi already win. No matter what happen, village safe forever. As the time grew nearer for the fight to the death between Sado and Miyagi, 
So the wind grew stronger and stronger until a fierce storm was raging. A girl, balanced on top of a tall bamboo tower, rang an alarm bell, warning the villagers to take shelter from the terrible winds. Miyagi and Daniel were helping a mother and her baby to safety when a great gust of wind blew down the shrine in the center of the village. Daniel called out to Miyagi. Hey! Saddle's in there! I, I saw him praying! Here, take me. I go find Saddle. Miyagi ran towards the heap of timber that had once been the shrine and met Sato's nephew running away from it. Where's uncle? He's dead! The nephew ran to safety while Miyagi searched for Sato. He found him still alive, but pinned down by a great beam far too heavy to lift. He raised his hand, ready for a karate blow. Sato saw him and taunted him. Miyagi! Oh, now you come to fight. Power. Now, when I am helpless, you are lower than a dog. Now, whole village, see, this is the only way you can win. With a great cry, <laughs> Miyagi brought down his hand on the beam and broke it to release Sato. He helped him up. Come, Sato san. Easy. Uh, oh, I got you, old friend. Come. You'll be okay now. Together they made for shelter. But Daniel saw that the girl on the bell tower was unable to get down, and that the whole tower was swaying dangerously. He started to climb up to rescue her. Sato told his nephew to help him. I cannot help him! I cannot! You thought I was dead. Now, to you, I am dead. His nephew looked at him with frightened eyes and ran away into the storm. <laughs> Daniel succeeded in rescuing the girl. And the next day, when everyone was clearing up the debris left by the storm, Sato appeared and handed some papers to Miyagi. I come help rebuild. Yeah, deed to village. Belong to villagers now. Forgive me, I beg you. Of course, Sato. Nothing to forgive. At the big dance festival to celebrate the survival of the village, Yukiya's niece was performing a solo when she was grabbed by Sato's nephew. He challenged Daniel to a fight to the death to satisfy his honor. Daniel had to accept, for there was a knife at the girl's throat. The fight was hard and furious and seemed to be going against Daniel. He tried the crane technique. But this time it didn't succeed as it did at the tournament. Then Miyagi started to twist the toy drum. Tap, 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 tap. The whole audience joined in, and Daniel realized what the Miyagi drum technique was. Swing the body out of range, then swing back and hit. Swing and hit. Swing and hit. Yeah, yeah. Sato's nephew could take no more. Daniel drew back his hand and aimed a blow at his opponent's face. Live or die, man. Die. Wrong. Daniel relaxed his arm and simply tweaked the boy's nose. Miyagi smiled and nodded approvingly as the crowd cheered loud and long. <laughs>